Hello, welcome to Chapter 8, Part 2, The Properties of Alcohols, Ethers, and Thiols. First and foremost, the polarity between the carbon-oxygen-hydrogen bond makes it have a partially positive charge on the carbon and the hydrogen and a partially negative charge on the oxygen. If we look at the electron density map, it shows the partial negative charge as red and the partial positive charge as blue. What this means is that now we have a hydrogen that can partially bond to oxygen on a nearby material. So what we call that bonding association is called hydrogen bonding. It's an attractive force between the partially positive charge on hydrogen and the partially negative charge on a nearby oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine atom. While it's not a very strong thing, uh, bond, in fact it's only about 2 to 5 kcals per mole, and they are considerably weaker than covalent bonds, which are roughly 20 times stronger, this bonding does have a significant effect on the physical properties. So, let's compare that first band in the yellow and the white section first. We have methanol and ethane. They have approximately the same molecular weight, but the ethanol has the OH group allowing it to hydrogen bond to molecules nearby. And if we look at that, the first thing we notice is the boiling point goes way up, all over 150 degrees higher boiling point for the methanol than for the ethane, even though they're the same molecular weight. Now notice that also has a significant impact on solubility in water. Because the methanol can hydrogen bond to the water, it is also soluble in that water. Note that the ethane, which has no polarized bonds at all, is insoluble in water and it's not dissolved at all. Let's move to the next band down, which is the yellow band. Now we added a single carbon to that chain, and we see that the molecular weight has increased. The ethanol, which is the first one, has a, the ability to hydrogen bond to itself to increase its boiling point to 78 degrees, but it also has that hydrogen bond allowing it to dissolve in water. Propane, which is approximately the same molecular weight, has a very low boiling point and is insoluble in water as well. If we move down to the next band, just by adding another carbon, we've gone to propanol and butane. And what we see is we see an increase in boiling point for both of those substances. This increase is directly correlated to its molecular weight. But again, the hydrogen bonding alcohol can dissolve in water, while the non-hydrogen bondable alkane is not. Now we move up one more carbon to the yellow band there. We've added a single carbon, and now we've started losing solubility in water. So the butanol has a total of four carbons plus the OH. It has an increased boiling point associated with that higher uh, number, higher molecular weight plus the hydrogen bonding. But our solubility is starting to go down in water. What this means is the entire long portion of the chain, those four carbon atoms, there are starting to not be pulled into the solution by the hydrogen bonding. The hydrogen bonding is being outweighed by that nonpolar branch. Okay. So if we go down to the last one, we have that pentanol where we've added one more carbon and our boiling point goes up, but our solubility goes down. We've added another carbon and we still only have that one hydrogen bonding unit. If we add an additional OH to the system, so it's 1,4-butane diol, we end up with increasing the boiling point significantly because we have those two different sides of the hydrogen bond, but it becomes more soluble in water. Well, if we compare that to hexane, which has approximately the same molecular weight, it has a much lower boiling point and is completely insoluble in water. So what we're seeing here is the hydrogen bonding is allowing it to, number one, increase its boiling point. Number two, it, it allows it to dissolve in water. And so what we can see a correlation here is that for every one hydroxyl group on an alkane chain, we can approximately get three to four carbon atoms dissolved into that water. So that for every four carbon atoms, you need to add a hydroxyl material to get it to be soluble in water. Okay, so <clears throat> because of this hydrogen bonding, alcohols can actually act as acids. In fact, it has a very similar pKa to that of water. If we look at aqueous solutions of alcohols, they tend to have the same pH as that of pure water. 
So if we look in a pKa table here, we have our hydrogen chloride, which is, our, of course, our very strong acid with a negative pKa of minus 7. Acetic acid is one of our organic acids that has a uh, slightly higher pKa of about 4.8. Methanol is really close to that of water at 15.5, where water is at 15.7, and ethanol is about 15.9, so they're all right around the same range. As we extend out that carbon chain, making it harder and harder for it to be dissolved in water, we also are decreasing its acidity because it has less and less of the molecule as hydrogen bonding. <clears throat> Alcohols can also act as bases because the uh, lone pair on the oxygen can accept a proton. Therefore, strong acids can transfer that proton to the uh, lone pairs on that oxygen and giving us the same uh, ethyl oxonium ion that we would have. And therefore, they can both act as weak acids by donating that proton or act as weak bases by accepting that proton. <coughs> In contrast, ethers are polar molecules, but they have carbon-oxygen-carbon -carbon bonds. Therefore, there is no hydrogen bond to act for hydrogen bonding. And therefore, they only have weak attractive forces between them. That means this is going to affect the boiling point of it. They will not be as increased as they were for the hydrogen-bonded system. So let's compare ethanol with dimethyl ether. In that first band we see, the white band there, uh, we see that the molecular weights are about the same, but there's a significant difference in boiling point. There's almost a 100 degree difference in boiling point between the ethanol and the dimethyl ether. And that has everything to do with the ability of that ethanol to hydrogen bond with water. Note that the uh, solubility of the ether is fairly low in water. It's not completely solid, but it can hydrogen bond. To the water can hydrogen bond to the oxygen of the ether, allowing some of it to go in. Now, if you look at the next band down, we've added uh, a total of two more carbons, and so we have the butanol, which we know is partially soluble in water and has a nice high boiling point based on its hydrogen bonding. But if we just rearrange that molecule to give us the diethyl ether, in the same, we have approximately an 85 degree difference in boiling point, but it's about the same solubility in water. And again, it's trying to pull in that, that um, alkane looking part, but it can still hydrogen bond to the oxygen of the ether. It can, the alcohol can hydrogen bond to the water itself, allowing them both to be partially soluble in water. If we move up one, we have the uh, pentanol and the diol of the butane, and those both are partially soluble in water and can be hydrogen bond to themselves and therefore gives them high boiling points. If we go with the same molecular weight of the butyl methyl ether, our boiling point is significantly lower and barely soluble in water. And if we make the dimethyl ether of it, notice there's an oxygen missing in that chain toward the end. There should be a methyl group, oxygen, methylene, methylene, methylene. So there's an oxygen group missing there. Uh, it has a slightly higher molecular weight, and the boiling point is not significantly different from that of it. But it is infinitely soluble in water because the water can hydrogen bond to two different oxygens in the system, allowing it to be pulled into water in a significant amount. Okay, so let's go on with the redescribing the ether here. It can be a hydrogen bond acceptor only, meaning that water can hydrogen bond to it, but ether cannot hydrogen bond to anything because it does not have that acidic hydrogen available to it. And so what that does for us is it gives us that really big significant difference in boiling points. Ethanol has a boiling point of 78 degrees C, and the dimethyl ether is 100 degrees lower, approximately at negative 24 degrees C. And it all has to do with the ability to bond to itself in solution. Notice that ethanol can hydrogen bond from, from molecule to molecule. The diethyl ether doesn't have that hydrogen bonding, only a weak dipole interaction. All right, let's move over to thiols. Thiols have some interesting properties as well. The first and foremost is that they have what we call stench. They are extremely sensitive to our noses. We can smell them at parts per billion, and so that's why we send to have a 
have stenches. Notice the two molecules toward the bottom there, the methylpropyl thiol, or the t-butyl mercaptan, and the 2-propane thiol, or isopropyl mercaptan, are used as odorants in natural gas. Natural gas does not have an odor to itself. We have to add these to make see if there is a leak so that we don't have a dangerous concentration of the hydrocarbons buildup that will explode. Okay, but what we also have with thiols is the fact that the electronegativity difference between hydrogen and sulfur is so low, it's down to the same as between carbon and hydrogen, and we consider that almost nonpolar bond. Because of this nonpolar bond, the hydrogens on thiols don't hydrogen bond the same way they do with alcohols. And we can demonstrate that by its boiling point. So if we look at the table below, methane thiol has a boiling point of 6 degrees Celsius, where methanol has 65 degrees Celsius. So there's almost a 60 degree difference there. If we just by adding an extra carbon, our boiling point goes up by molecular weight, but it's significantly different down at ethanol and the butane thiol is significantly lower than that for butane. So uh, they also have, they are also less soluble in water than the comparable alcohols because of the lack of hydrogen bonding. They still could be a hydrogen bonding donor, but they are not a hydrogen bond. Uh, the hydrogen does not donate to the compounds, only is accepting of hydrogen bonds from like water, etc. Okay. In addition to that, because that is a nonpolar bond, thiols tend to be stronger acids than alcohols. Think about it as this the sulfur is bigger and fluffier, and it has a nonpolar bond, so that when you do pull it away, uh, when you do pull that hydrogen away, it's a nice stable anion, and therefore it's easier to remove that hydrogen because it's not as polar a bond, therefore it's a more acidic proton. So if we think about that, we can even make salts from these materials where we can take sodium hydroxide and a thiol and react them to give us water and the sodium salt of the thiol. Note we cannot do this with alcohols because they end up being approximately the same acid strength as water and the alcohol have approximately the same pKa. Therefore, this reaction does not have 